and then there's a real tomato-y kind of herby flavour from the rice as well. They really complement each other really well. And you can't really taste the salmon that much either. Hi everyone and welcome back to Googie's Kitchen and if you are new here then hello and welcome. My name is Alexis and in today's video I want to share with you how to make my delicious salmon and chorizo fish balls on a herby tomato rice. As I just mentioned, today I want to share with you how to make my delicious salmon and chorizo fish balls on a herby tomato rice. So this recipe is really easy. It sounds slightly complicated, I know, but it is honestly very easy. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually remove the skin from the salmon before I put it into the blender. And I'm just going to show you how to do that. So I'm just going to take a piece of salmon from the packet. I'm trying to keep the plastic over the top because we've got a few flies coming in at the moment. I love fish, so that's why I've still got it in the packet at the moment. And uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hand on top of the fleshy part of this, on top of the skin of the salmon, sorry. And then I'm going to just move my knife in between the skin and the flesh wriggle it all the way down until I get to a point where I can't wriggle it anymore and I just take this last bit off and then that's just simply how you remove skin from salmon so and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop this up into cubes and I'm gonna put this into the food processor just next to me in a moment and then I will continue to remove the skin from the rest of the salmon and hope the flies don't get to me. I have removed the skin from all the pieces of salmon and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some chorizo but first I just wanted to let you know that I have about four tablespoons of almond flour in this bowl and to this bowl I have added um, about two, two and a half tablespoons of water and I wanted to get like an eggy consistency to help the uh, salmon balls to stick together a bit better. So um, I've just left that to soak for about five minutes. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my chorizo. So I've got about 160 grams of chorizo. So I'm going to put in with about 500 grams of uh, salmon. Sorry, there's a bird singing quite loudly outside the door at the moment. That's quite annoying, is it a bird? Don't know, there's something outside anyway. But anyway, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of salt to that. So I'm just adding a pinch or two, and then I'm going to add a little bit of pepper. Salt and pepper to your taste. If you like it, then add it. If you don't, then don't worry about it. And I'm just going to add the pepper. And then I've left a piece of chorizo behind there. And then I'm going to add in the almond flour and water as well so I'm just going to put that in and then I'm going to turn this on but I have a feeling I haven't turned this on at the wall so I have there you go ingredients until they are smooth-ish they don't have to be particularly smooth but smooth-ish is fine and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my salmon balls so I've dampened my hands under the tap and I'm just going to divide this mixture I'm going to bring it all together like so and I'm going to try and divide it into three because I'm making this for three people well that's not easy is it there you go I think that's about three and then from that mixture I'm going to grab a piece of the ball and I'm going to roll it up in my hands like so and as you can see the mixture isn't really sticking because my hands have been dampened so that's why I always like to wet my hands before I start doing anything like this so um, I've, as, as you can see I've rolled the ball in between my palms and I'm just going to put that 
onto the plate like so and I'm just going to continue to do this until I've mused up all of this mixture. As you can see I have finished making the salmon and chorizo balls so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these into the fridge for a good couple of hours. A good couple of hours should be okay but if you could put them in for about five to six or preferably overnight it would be brilliant. What happens to the fish balls is they tend to go hard and then when you put them onto a hot baking tray so when I preheat the oven I I should put my baking tray in at the same time so when you put them onto the hot baking tray the fat that's in the chorizo and the salmon should hopefully penetrate them and make them really nice and soft and tender so as I said I'm off to put these into the fridge for a couple of hours the fish balls have been in the fridge for a couple of hours so what I'm going to do is I'm going to preheat my oven to 200 degrees I've also put a baking tray in the oven as well so that's preheating along with with the oven and now I'm going to cook the herby tomato rice. I'm going to add a little bit of oil to the base of the pan like so and then I'm going to leave the pan to heat up. The pan is getting nice and hot now so what I'm going to do is I am going to add the onion to the base of the pan. So I've peeled a sliced and diced one onion that I'm just going to add to the base and I'm going to fry the onion until it starts to soften and become a lovely golden brown colour. The onion has started to soften and turn golden brown just around the edges. So I'm going to add in a courgette now. So I have peeled and grated one courgette. You don't have to grate it. The reason I do is simply to hide it from my little family. Um, my husband and son aren't great vegetable fans, so I always tend to grate vegetables. But as I said, you don't have to. You can peel and slice it or peel and chop it if you want to. Um, and I'm just going to add that to the base of the pan. And I'm just going to fry that for a few moments just to penetrate it and get some heat through it basically. I'm also going to turn the heat down slightly as well at this point because it is getting a bit warm. Now normally I would add a little bit of water but because the courgette is quite wet I don't really feel I need to although it does look as though it is sticking a little bit to the base. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water to the base of the pan as well like so. And then to that, I'm going to add some herbs. Now in the original recipe, and I have made this video before, I think, but in the original recipe and in the other video, I use dried herbs, but today I'm gonna to use fresh. I'm actually growing some in my garden, which I'm really proud of. So um, I am going to be using some thyme, some rosemary, some lemon balm, and some oregano as well or oregano depending on which continent you're standing so i'm just going to add those to the base of the pan as well and i'm just going to fry those around just to give it some extra flavor basically herbs and chorizo actually go really nicely together as well so i'm just adding these to add a bit of extra flavor to the rice and make the dish a bit more interesting and these smell really lovely as well when they're fried. So yeah, I just wanted to do that for 30 seconds or so. And now I'm going to add in my rice. So I'm making this for my husband, my son and myself. So I've done about two portions and then a little one. And I'm just gonna add the rice to the base of the pan. So what I like to do is wash the rice through twice before I then put it into the base of my pan and mix it around. I tend to fry it like for risotto rice, it is brown rice, but it's perfectly okay to fry it like risotto rice. And I'm just going to fry it for about 30 seconds or so, until it becomes sort of slightly clear and see-through. Brown rice never goes really see-through, but it will, go, it will go slightly clear. So I'm just frying this around, and then I've done that, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some tomatoes to the base of my pan. So I have one tin of tomatoes. I think the original recipe said one tin as well. So as I've got half of the ingredients, I'm going to try and use about half of the stock as well, but I will see. I will have to judge that. So I'm just gonna add the stock. And I always 
tend to put it, if you've watched my videos before, you'll know that I like to put the stock into the tin to get rid of the juice around the outside as well. Just helps to clear the tin out really well. My grandmother's trick that was. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the spoon into the pan until it hits the bottom. And I'm gonna see how much stock is in there by measuring it against the line on my middle finger. So the top line on my middle finger. I think I will need a little bit more stock in that to be honest. Just a touch and I'm just going to do that again. Oh yeah that's perfect now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some tamari to this as well. So I'm going to add in about a tablespoon of tamari. I think I said one to two in the original recipe. As I'm halving the ingredients, I'm going to halve the tamari. Tamari is a soya sauce, it's a fermented soya sauce. So if you can't get it, then you can always use soya sauce as well. Um, and I've added in a tablespoon of tomato puree to that as well. And I'm just going to mix those ingredients in. I'm going to turn the heat back up and I'm going to bring this to the bowl. I'll put the lid on in a moment. And then once it comes to the bowl, I'll turn it down and leave it to simmer. But I'm just going to pop the lid onto the pot and I'm just going to leave this to come to the boil. As you can see, the pan has come to the boil, so I'm just going to turn this heat down to a medium heat. I'm going to leave the lid on and I'm going to let this simmer until all of the liquid has disappeared. The oven has preheated and the rice is simmering away nicely, so I'm going to pop the fish balls into the oven. So I took out the preheated baking tray and I put them onto the baking tray. This is a pampered chef but stoneware baking tray, so I don't need to add any oil to this, but if you need to to add oil to yours then please do and now I'm going to put these back into the oven for about 12 to 15 minutes or until the fish starts to flake away from itself. The liquid has disappeared from the rice so the rice is cooked and I think the meatballs are done. I'm just going to check by pulling one apart. Yep that's done. If the um, fish flakes away easily from itself then it's cooked. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to serve up and I'm going to try a bit of this and see how it tastes. There's some chewiness from the chorizo, and then there's a real tomato-y kind of herby flavour from the rice as well. They really complement each other really well. And you can't really taste the salmon that much either. I mean, you know it's there, but it's not like a strong flavour because the chorizo slightly overpowers it. So if you don't like salmon, then this might be a really good way to eat it. But yes, I'm really looking forward to this for my dinner now. That's how you make my delicious salmon and chorizo fish balls on a herby tomato rice. And that recipe, I will link in the description box below for you. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to be having these for our dinner this evening and they smell and taste so good, I can't wait. So for now, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And please feel free to leave any comments below. And please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you all soon. Bye.